Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. We appreciate you joining us. Today I'm gonna to do some jerky for you and it's a recipe that I've never tried, so I'm gonna bring you along with me. It's gonna be a bourbon infused beef jerky. Let me show you what goes in it. All right everybody, let me show you what I'm gonna put in this. And this is just my own recipe. Um, I'm using some root beer. I just wanna see how root beer flavored uh, the marinade and the, and the meat. But you're welcome to use Dr. Pepper or RC Cola or whatever, whatever you want. I'm using some bourbon. This is Maker's Mark. I got some pineapple juice. Got some local honey. Some Texas peat hot sauce. Frank's red hot sauce. Lee and Perry, some Worcestershire. A little, little uh, Colgan's liquid smoke. Onion powder, chili powder, chipotle powder, whole Mexican oregano, garlic powder. And this is some oak smoked black pepper that I found uh, from a local sausage maker here. Uh, just regular black pepper would work. <laughs> But try to make sure this is kind of coarse. And also I've got some of this Maldon sea sauce. This is smoked. And this is from a good friend over in Germany, Walsh. He's, uh, he's got his own YouTube channel. Y'all check it out. It's the Punk Rock Kitchen. I'll put a link down below. Y'all click the show more. And also while you're down there, I'll put a link. I'll put the description of, of the recipe that I'm using here. And again, I just wrote it out. I'm ready to go. If you pan over here, you can see I've got everything already measured out. Let's mix all this together and make a marinade. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put everything into one bowl and I'm going to whisk it all together, make sure everything's incorporated, and then we're going to put the uh, meat with it. So let's get started. This is two cups of root beer, one cup of bourbon, one cup of pineapple juice, one half cups of French Red Hot, one half cup dark brown sugar. You're welcome to use light brown if you don't have the dark brown. One third cup of honey going in. One quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. Got one tablespoon liquid smoke. One tablespoon Texas peat. Okay, that's all of our liquids. Let's move on to the measured out ingredients here. So, what I've got on this plate. One tablespoon garlic powder. One tablespoon of onion powder. Half a teaspoon of chili powder half teaspoon chipotle powder, half teaspoon of oregano. I've also got three tablespoons of that coarse black pepper and two tablespoons over here of the mild on smoked salt. All that's going in. Whisk all this up real good. And you wanna give it a little quick taste. I like that. We're gonna roll with that. Let me go get the meat. Now let me show you what the meat is uh, here. I've got this beef eye of round roast. Uh, this is uh, two and a half pounds. Now what I did, I picked out a roast and took it up to my butcher and said, can you slice this a quarter inch thick for me? And he was like, sure. So that, he went ahead and did that for me and I appreciate the butchers over there at HEB that I'm familiar with. It helped me out all the time with my meat selections and stuff. Uh, but I'm using this particular uh, I have round roast because it doesn't have a whole lot of fat. See, there's not a whole lot of uh, fat or gristle or anything on that. And uh, if you don't have this or don't want to use this, flank steak would work or any other cut that you don't have a whole lot of fat because that fat will turn rancid on you and it'll make your jerky go bad a lot quicker. So I'm just going to add all of this to this bowl, put this meat in this bowl. We're going to stir it up, make sure all the meat is covered by the marinade. I'm going to put some plastic wrap on top of it. We're going to stick it in the fridge and let it sit and marinate for, uh, I'm, I'm shooting for about 24 hours. So uh, we'll pick this back up tomorrow and uh, we'll cook up some jerky. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's the next day. It has been 23 hours since we put that meat in the fridge to marinate. I want to start about 24 hours in uh, to, to dehydrate it. So 23 hours in now. I'm starting up my Weber Smoky Mountain to get it warmed up so that when 24 hours comes, we can go ahead and throw the meat on. I would plan to do this inside in my oven at about 170, and that's why I put the liquid smoke and also the smoked salt and pepper in that marinade. Unfortunately, Karen wanted to do some painting in the kitchen, so I've been kicked outside. We're cooking on my Weber Smoky Mountain. The last time I did this on my Weber Smoky Mountain, I used the Minion method. Today, we're trying the Snake method per request from one of you guys. I appreciate this, the request. So um, since I'm using the Weber Smoky Mountain, 
and I've already got liquid smoke and the smoked salt and pepper in the marinade. I'm not using any wood for additional smoke on the jerky. It should be have that smoke flavor already. So we're just using straight charcoal briquettes. I'm using Kingsford Blue. And let me show you how I've got this stacked up in the Weber Smoky Mountain for the snake method. Should be good, y'all. Stick around. All right, hopefully y'all can make this out okay. Now, what I've done, I've left out the ring, the, the charcoal fire ring in here. I just left it out. Um, as y'all seen in my modification videos, I did put an extra smaller grate in here to kind of crisscross and keep the uh, ashes from falling through so quickly. I've got three stacks of charcoal all around the edge. I'm going to start here close to one of these vent holes. And where there are other vent holes, I've kind of stacked the coals a little bit higher just in case they start dying out a little bit. Um, I've never tried this method on my Weber Smoky Mountain, so we're going to learn together on it. Um, and I've just, it's a snake, so it's going to start here and it's going to work its way all around here for a long, low, slow cook. And if I find that I'm running out of charcoal, I can always come back and add more charcoal to this end. Before it gets to this end, I can add more charcoal and, and keep it going for, you know, until I run out of charcoal if I wanted to. I've got a charcoal starter here. This is uh, just one of those wood type starters. Just light her up, let it go. And we should be good to go, folks. We'll be back here. I'm gonna go get the rest of the parts from uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. We'll get it set up and we'll bring it up to temp. I'm gonna be trying to cook about uh, 140 to 160 if I'm lucky. We'll see how it goes. Stick around. It's been about 15 minutes. Let me uh, back her out of here and let me show you what we're working with. it up a little bit so hopefully y'all can see everything that we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and stick the midsection on. Alright, and I do have the water pan in here, but there's nothing in it. And I've got the uh, second grate down in here. And I'm going to load it up before I put my other grate in there. But right now I'm going to go ahead and set the lid on it. So we can start getting it up to temp. All the vents on the bottom are wide open. All the vents on the top are wide open. I think we're good to go, folks. We'll be back here shortly to load it up with some meat. We are back. It's been about 15 minutes. Let these coals start going. As you can see, uh, we're about 115 and it's still climbing. So I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of this thing. We're going to put on one layer of one layer of that meat. Over here, I don't know if y'all can see, but I've got it still wrapped up. In this bowl. All right. And sometimes I dry this off, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to sit these on there. And you don't want to crowd them up. You just want to give them just a little space so that air can flow between them. And try to fit as many as you can on this bottom rack. So let me get these all done here. We'll be right back, folks. Well, I was going to put all that meat on the bottom rack that I could and then use the upper rack for the rest of it but I found that all of that two and a half pounds of meat fit on that bottom rack by itself so I took and transferred all the meat up to the upper rack that's where we're at now let me show you what we're gonna do here that's what we got and again try not to let them touch uh, they need some space between them so that the air can flow freely around them me and Karen really like black pepper seasoned jerky so I'm gonna throw in a little bit more of this Oak smoked black pepper. Um, this is optional. You don't have to do this by any means. It's just how we like it. Yeah, I'll give it a little extra kick. Just like so. I'm going to throw the lid back on here. And we're going to let this baby go. And again, we're going to try to maintain, um, try to maintain around 150-ish, I'm thinking. I remember last time I, my Weber Smoky Mountain doing the Minion Method cooked at about 150 to 175 so I'm hoping this snake method will give me a little bit lower temps because ideally you want to try to cook about 140 to 150 Fahrenheit we'll see how it goes if it starts raising up too high in temps I'm gonna start closing some of those bottom vents down just a little bit you know halfway and then see how that pans out and just adjust the vents until I'm maintaining about 150 we'll bring you back show you where we're at here in two or three hours probably we are at two hours now and I'm just having a hard time keeping this thing below 160. Right now I've got two vents totally closed and one of them just barely cracked open. So we're just going to roll with whatever temp I get here. Let's see how it looks. 
Oh my gosh, check that out, folks. Does that look fine? Oh yeah. Looks really, really nice. Two hours in. All right, I'm gonna flip all these over, and then we're gonna dust them with uh, black pepper again, and we'll continue cooking. So we'll meet y'all back here for another update in a little bit. Oh, uh, just a quick update. I just, I just shut the camera off. So just letting y'all know, so these over here where the charcoals are burning, these are burning hotter. So I'm gonna take and rotate them over this way. Flip sides with the opposite side so that we can get some even cooking going on here. Yeah, see? Put these that are cooking faster on this other side. And the ones on the opposite side, put them over here. Welcome back everybody, we're three hours in and I'm just flipping all these over. I've already flipped these over here so I'm just going through and flipping them all over again. Just trying to do some even cooking here. I did find that uh, to maintain the, the proper temp, the, uh, the coals, they started over here on this corner, now they're worked over this way. And what I'm doing is closing off all the bottom vents and just cracking, barely cracking open the vent that's closest to where the coals are burning. And I'm leaving the top vent fully open, that way we're getting some airflow. And that helps me maintain about a 160 or so. And um, that, that's how we're going to roll with it. It's, it's looking alright, I'm not minding. It was cooking a little bit hotter than, hotter than I really wanted. I mean, it, look, this, this is looking really good right now. I'm thinking this may be done here in another hour or two. We'll keep drying it out, keep cooking it, and uh, we'll keep checking on it here in a little bit. We'll be back. All right, everybody, we're four hours in. We're still holding 160, so the vent setup is working for me pretty good. Let's show you what we got. Now, what I did, I just flipped these over. Sorry I didn't do it on camera, but I did just flip these over, and I rotated the ones that were over here back over here and vice versa. And I tasted one of them, and uh, they're they're, written, they're really getting, you know, you can see the sinew of the meat breaking apart right there. So they're, they're getting real close to being done, but they're not quite spicy enough. So I may add a little bit more uh, sriracha or something like that in the future on this vid, on this uh, recipe. But in the meantime, I'm gonna spice them up with a little bit of this Texas rib candy. This is the mango habanero. It's my favorite. You can order it yourself from texaspepperjelly.com wonderful stuff now give it a shot they got a lot of different versions of this different flavors I just happen to like the mango habanero and it's a lot of sweet with heat so it's not I mean you know habanero is not super kicking I'm just gonna rub this on here and we're gonna go with it and uh, here in about an hour I'll flip them over and I'll baste the other side with some of this mango habanero and I think that's gonna really add a nice flavor to, to this jerky. It may not last as long because we are adding some sugar to the outside edge of it. So it may not last quite as long, but uh, it's gonna taste great, I guarantee. So we'll be back, we'll check on it here in a little bit and uh, give you a taste of it when it's done. Hey everybody, it's another half hour. So it's, uh, what, four and a half hours in? I just flipped all of these pieces of jerky over we're gonna baste it again with some some of that uh, mango habanero and I'll tell you what it sure does make it look pretty now uh, it's it's got a nice little sweet sweetness about it with some heat with that uh, habanero in there but uh, don't be shy it's this is really really a nice balance of sweet and heat so don't let it scare you away even though it says habanero in there so we're gonna give this another half hour or so, and I think this uh, jerky is gonna be about done. All right, everybody, here's just some sampling of what this turned out like. Um, I've gotta say it smells absolutely amazing and it looks gorgeous. Uh, I mean, gee whiz. Check that out. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's give this a taste. Let's check it out. That's some good jerky, folks. I love that black pepper on there. Taste a little bit of the bourbon in there. I'd probably go up a little bit more on the uh, Worcestershire sauce. Maybe a touch more salt. That's really good, but yeah. I'm telling you, it's, it's done perfectly. Um, you can see 
the, the meat just kind of peels apart like jerky, like it should. That's jam and jerky. Hmm. Hope y'all like this recipe. If you do try it, let me know. Be sure and click the show more down below the video and you'll get in the description box down there, you'll see the recipe that I showed you here. That's really good though, y'all need to check that out. Appreciate y'all joining us. <laughs> Folks, I hope you share the video. When you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. We'll see y'all next time.